friends, it's Alex from Vulture Culture, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Korg DW8000 and how to make some sounds with it. Since I started recording these videos on the DW8000, Korg announced that they were going to be releasing the Mod Wave, which is an update to the Korg DW8000 uh, 36 years later, and it's based on the same idea, which is starting with wavetables and applying subtractive synthesis to it. So it's really exciting to have the original Mod Wave sitting in front of me and be able to tear it apart and really figure out what makes it tick. I'm gonna be using the controller editor for the DW8000, which is free, and I'll put the link in the description. Also, if you want a really good deep dive into the DW8000, YouTuber Yatavio did basically a video owner's manual of the thing that's incredible. I'll put the link to that in the description too. But today, I just wanna test out some of the oscillators, some of the wavetables that are in the DW8000, as well as maybe make a sound or two. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I don't wanna waste any of your time, so let's get started. Okay, so what we're looking at here with the controller editor is every parameter in the DW8000. And there's not that many you'll notice, but there is a lot to cover. So I'm gonna to try to go as quickly through this as I can, but forgive me if I miss something. What I've done is use this to set up basically an init patch, which the DW8000 doesn't have. Uh, because of the limited patch memory, every patch is used to create a sound the way it's loaded in. So it's actually kind of funny in the manual, it says, uh, uh, there are 64 sounds already in memory. If you have a new sound in mind, the easiest approach is to first select a sound that resembles the sound you want to create, then edit. Change the sound until you get the sound you want. If you don't find a similar sound, it doesn't matter. Start with any sound you like. So what I did was take a sound I didn't like and just turn it into an init saw patch. And you can hear on that low note that there's some aliasing. Hear that high sine wave up there. What I thought would be interesting is if we compared the sound of the DW8000, a synth released in 1985, to the Korg Prologue, which is the flagship analog synthesizer from Korg in 2018. So here's the sound of the DW8000 saw. And here's the Prologue. Pretty similar, the Prologue's a little brighter. And for comparison, here's the sound of uh, Omnisphere Sawtooth. So maybe even a little bit brighter than that. Let's listen to it down low. This is the DW8000, two octaves down. Here's the prologue. And here's Omnisphere. You can hear the higher, buzzier stuff up there. So really, the DW8000 sounds pretty analog. I was expecting it to sound more cold and brittle, but if anything, it's a little bit warmer than the prologue. So we have a total of 16 wavetables we can use. We'll go to the square. Now you notice this doesn't look like a square, but it says in the manual, uh, they're the same as a sort of a pulse width. So we can hear. And to compare that with the, uh, we'll listen to the prologue first. Pretty similar. And here's Omnisphere. I mean, honestly, it's, it's pretty much, I'd say spot on. And there's no triangle wave actually in this synth. Uh, so no point comparing that with the prologue and Omnisphere. So anyways, let's just go over how these oscillators sound, all 16 of them real quick, just so you can get acquainted with what's going on with this with no filter or anything. All right, so that's a sawtooth. Now we have a clarinet waveform. Oh, that's the, the square. All right, so, so far, so good. Acoustic piano. There's so many sounds in this that give you this sort of like FME sort of vibe. I wonder if they were derived from FM. Uh, I don't know. Electric piano. Now we're going to electric piano hard. What do we have, clavinet? Really grating. <laughs> Organ. Brass. So to me, this is probably trying to grasp at the Oberheim sound. Saxophone. I really like this one because it's got this really buzzy, noisy top end. But it's really thick in the low end too. Violin. 
And you probably notice real quick here, I, I forgot to say this, but although these are these are not samples, right? It's not it's a waveform that's supposed to be suggestive of an instrument. And perhaps if you apply the filter and the amp envelope in the right way, you can get a sound that's sort of like a violin. But let's be honest here. This is not either a sampler nor is it FM. This is just digital wavetables uh, being fed through analog filters and analog envelopes. So that's what we're dealing with here. So even though it says violin, don't be thinking like, oh, this doesn't sound at all like a violin. It's not really supposed to. We're using just these little snippets of waveforms for synthesis. This is supposed to sound like a synth, although there are some presets that are trying at certain sounds. Really, I think th this thing shines as a wavetable synth and not to get too hung up on the whole names of the waveforms. Acoustic guitar. You can hear how that, once it's filtered, could probably actually make a decently interesting guitar. This is distorted. Really uh, bright mid-range here. Uh, let's compare that to the sawtooth real quick. Thicker in the low end, really thin. Okay, electric bass. Really, uh, really thunderous. Digital bass. I remember on this one when you play um, kind of low mid, it almost sounds like a male choir. You get a little bit of awe. Really cool. Uh, we've got a bell. And that obviously you could get very uh, FM bell type tones out of it. Uh, and then we have a sine wave. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with waveform one, again, the sawtooth. And you'll notice we have a second waveform over here. We can change, we can bring this in. And you'll see as I move the slider on the editor that it's moving the parameters here. I'm using the editor because it's an easier way to program everything. Retroactive does make a programmer for this. Uh, and this isn't that hard of an interface to get used to, but this is easier for me. And it's also better demonstration purposes so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I can bring this oscillator in. And you can hear that there is some phasing. It's not perfect every time, so already there's a little bit of analog in there, even though there's no analog part of the oscillators anyways. But what's interesting is you can detune it, of course. And what I said in my first video about the DW8000 holds here, which is that um, there's something really beautiful and predictable about the detune in the synth. That's going to pulse like that to infinity. If this was the Prolog or any other uh, voltage controlled oscillator synth, the detune would not repeat in such a mechanical fashion. It would sort of wobble in and out. Uh, but here we get this exactly every time. And the, the speed of that phasing is going to be half every octave. So it's almost like, it really sounds like an LFO, right? It doesn't sound like analog detune at all, for better or worse. Um, so anyways, we can bring the tune wherever we would like it. Uh, just a little detune is okay for now. And of course we can change the uh, interval too. So we can make this like a fifth. Or, and we can change the octave here, so. For now, we'll leave it on the same. Um, and we have these different modes. And I don't understand the difference truly between one and two. I looked it up in the manual. Basically, what one does is as you move, um, as you play notes, uh, let's say, so if I go uh, start with voice one, two, three, and so on. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Um, conversely, in poly mode two, uh, if I was to, instead of going one, two, three, four, like that, as it cycles through the voices, it, it would be one, 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 two, three, four. 
right now for practical purposes i don't know what the difference is there so if someone knows you can put it in the comments but anyways unison one and two is you can think of as unison where all of the voices are stacked up on one note uh one of them's legato and one of them re-triggers the envelope every time so really simple so anyways if i put it into unison mode you'll hear pretty quickly the difference in the amount of uh thickness And we can detune this further. We get some really crazy Reese bass type stuff with this. Really badass. I mean, it's surprising how much you can get out of this synth from the 80s. Uh, and of course, we have a noise oscillator too. Um, so if I take this detune back down. be useful for certain types of sounds especially as you feed that into the filter you can get certain types of uh, windy timbres out of that but anyways i'll put this back in uh, poly mode for now because the unison mode's pretty intense um so let's listen to the filter real quick uh let's turn this oscillator all the way back down and listen to the sawtooth and do a quick little filter sweep now this isn't a digital synth this is a hybrid synth and you'll notice some stepping but the envelopes, if I was to use an envelope or a uh, the, what's MG is what Korg used to call an LFO. If I was to use that to control the uh, uh, Volgers Control uh, filter here, you can hear there's no stepping. So it's only when you're moving it, and that's because of the archaic MIDI implementation from 1985. Just what there were these discrete values here, those all you got. So let's uh, crank some resonance up. And you can hear as the resonance is increased, you lose a lot of bass. So you can hear how horrible that sounds. You hear all of the stepping. Um, but what we could do is again, we'll probably get a better result if we use the LFO or the modulation generators it's called. So we can really hear how the resonance sounds. Can't tell if there's a little stepping in there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fully self-oscillating uh, filter, analog filter. I said this in the last video, the DW8000's closest brother in the modern world would be something like the Novation Summit, where you're starting with uh, digital wavetables and then running it through analog components. And that, that still holds up. And you can really hear that we've got this great analog sounding filter. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the control from the LFO to the filter here, and instead we'll add this uh, envelope generator intensity. So it's the same thing on the prologue. And you'll notice that there's a lot going on with this uh, compared to a regular envelope. So the easiest way to describe this is you've got an attack and decay stage, which should be familiar to anybody who's used to synth. But you also have this break point and slope, which you can think of as a second uh, set of stuff. So for instance, if I add some attack, decay, uh, some break point and slope, we should be able to hear. So we can create these more complex sounding uh, envelopes than what you could create with a uh, just a traditional ADSR. You can hear some clicking in there from some sort of something I'm not doing right. So yeah, so you see it drops dramatically. Let me see if the increasing the slope here. All right, I can probably turn that down a little. All right, let's add a little of this first waveform back in. All right, one thing we can do also is add a little bit of keyboard tracking. So we've got a quarter, a half, and a whole, whole keyboard tracking. Now, what you'll notice, we have this little auto bend here, so we can have it auto bend down on oscillator one, two, or both. So I'll show you real quick what this is like on both, so you can really hear it. Uh, but then we'll only apply it to oscillator two. 
So if I increase the time and the intensity, you can hear what it is falling to that note. And it's really cool because, uh, like I said in the first video on the DW8000, what they did was very smart with the workflow where they actually added some extra envelopes into the synth without there being, uh, you know, having to have multiple of these that we tune. We just have two knobs here. So, so I'm going to turn the intensity down a little bit. But I like where the time is at, and I'm just going to apply it to oscillator two. What that's going to do is create a little bit of phasing between the two, hopefully. You hear that sound? That's a little trick to be able to get more convincing brass patches. So we've got the little auto bend in there. We've got control of the bends and stuff so we can control that. This little joystick over here. Um, but now we get to the really interesting thing, which is the uh, delay section. So this digital delay section is bizarre. <laughs> um, what I think it's most useful for is for chorusing, not for delay, although that is possible. But why would you really? I mean, there's nothing the digital delay in this does better than any delay in your DAW. Um, but what this can do is this really cool chorusing. So if I take this and increase it, you'll hear. Immediately, we're very stereo. Let's increase the release and the attack on the envelope here. Let's add even a little bit more release and add some release to the filter too. But I believe if we bring the time all the way up, now you can hear it really sounds like a delay, but if we bring it back down, So we can look at the aftertouch over here. So why don't we add it to the filter and see what happens here? I don't think anything's happening. And I think that probably, see what happens if I add it here? I think the aftertouch is just dead on this keyboard. That's a common thing for uh, synths from, you know, the eighties is the aftertouch uh, just doesn't last 30 something years. Uh, wasn't made to last, unfortunately, which is fine. I don't really care. Okay, so I just added uh, a little bit of Vintage Verb, Valhalla Vintage Verb on the uh, track, and it's 25% uh, on the Homestar Blade Runner thing. So this is how this patch sounds. Pretty big, badass, and beefy. So I'm a big fan of this synth and the way it can sound. Um, it's absolutely uh, beautiful for what it did at the time. And this patch is just uh, oscillators on waveform one of 16. So I'll probably do some more videos like this, creating some sounds. Um, for the time being, I'm gonna write this in. So I just hit the write button on the thing and then type in program number one, two. So that's program two. And now if I change the program here and go to right, I can get back to 
sort of Blade runner -y type sound. We could uh, add a little bit of movement to the waveform by increasing this here. So you can hear what's happening. That's the oscillator. Uh, I'll ex exaggerate it, the vibrato. And then bring it really low down. Actually, I think I could use even a little bit less. So I like it like that. So why don't we write that? So once again, we'll just write program one, two. Oh shit, I think I deleted the first one, so wait. Whoops, I overwrote one of my other patches. Well, that's the fucking problem with uh, doing things this way. But it, maybe that's part of the fun too. But yeah, so I think that's it for this video. Uh, please, if you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, it makes a huge difference. If you have any questions about the DW8000 or types of videos you'd like to do, things you'd like me to cover with it, um, please let me know in the comments. I appreciate that very much. If there's anything, someone could explain to me the breakpoint slope thing, that would be great too. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate you guys. I'm Alex from Vulture Culture and I'll see you in the next video.